I've spent years putting together my perfect set of supplies for my graphite drawings, but this got me thinking, how realistic could I draw if I took away all of my favorite go-to supplies and just used the cheapest, most basic supplies that most of us already have at home? This is going to be a challenge. For paper, I am using paper from my printer. This is cheap supermarket own brand paper, which means it's super thin and just not the best quality for realistic drawing. I think the first pencil most of us use normally at school is the HB pencil. And I see a lot of beginners only ever use a HP pencil when they're trying to draw realistically but really how far can it get you that's what I want to find out also we're going to need an eraser I'm just going to be using this for mistakes because it's just so big I don't think it will be much use for anything else oh and there is one more thing that I'll be using a sharpener because I don't think we're going to get very far without one so let's get started I'm going to try to draw this and there are a few problems I think I might come across when I do this challenge. First of all, just look at all of those dark shadows in the photo. This HP pencil can only get so dark and it's very easy for this drawing to end up looking flat if I can't create that dark shading. The second challenge is that this paper is very thin. Just look at how thin this is. I'm going to be doing a lot of shading, maybe some erasing if I'm having a bad sketch day. And I just don't know if this paper will be able to handle all of that without tearing. And number three is look at her skin. It's super smooth. I haven't got any blending tools, so I'm just going to have to be super careful when shading because I don't want it to look a grainy mess. So with that in mind, let's jump into the drawing. Sketching this drawing wasn't actually that different from what I would usually do because I do normally sketch with a HP pencil and most of the time I actually sketch using this exact printer paper. I sketch on this paper and then when I'm happy with the sketch I transfer it over onto my proper paper afterwards. My plan is to really try and vary my pencil pressure to try and get a decent range of values into this drawing. And the eyes are definitely the darkest part of the entire face. So I thought it would be good to shade them in first so that I could see how dark I could actually get them. And then I would use this to sort of judge what all of my other values for the face should be. And you know what? I was actually really pleasantly surprised at how dark the pencil was able to go. It wasn't actually that bad. So at this point, I was really hopeful that I'd be able to get some sort of depth into this drawing. One thing that I did when I was shading in the skin is I actually started to hold my pencil a little bit further back to try and really reduce the pressure I was applying onto the pencil. And I definitely found that this helped me get a smoother, more even layer of shading over the entire skin. The shading was still a bit grainy. It wasn't completely smooth. And sometimes I did accidentally press too hard and some of those pencil lines just started to show through a bit more obviously and it made the skin look a little bit messy. And the problem was I didn't feel like I had any way to fix these little mistakes that I was making. Really small things like this felt really permanent, which kind of made me feel more stressed out because there was just so much more pressure to get everything perfect first time. But one thing that actually really surprised me in a good way was how this paper actually handled all of the shading and erasing. It handled it way better than I thought it would. The paper didn't tear at all. And even in some of those places where I pressed really hard on the pencil like the neck the paper was fine I did actually start to notice I was getting some scratchy markings showing and I don't know if this was because of the quality of the pencil now for details like the eyelashes and flyaway hairs, this pencil was actually really good. Because the HB pencil has quite a hard lead anyway, it does make it really great for getting in those sharp details. But apart from this, it just felt like it took way more time to achieve a result that wasn't even as good as my usual drawings. It just felt inefficient, not as enjoyable, and I did feel really restricted. But I'm not gonna lie, I am actually pretty happy with how this turned out. It went way Way better than I was expecting and I kind of like this more sketchy imperfect look that this drawing has. You can see that the drawing looks quite realistic and I think this experiment shows you that you can actually get quite far with cheap supplies but just because you can get by with these supplies the real question to ask is whether you should just use these supplies. I'm actually really curious to know what I could make this drawing look like if I used my normal supplies. 
Okay, these are the supplies I would normally use for my graphite drawings and actually getting all of these is quite affordable. If you do want to know all of the drawing supplies I normally use, which pencil grades I normally use and which papers are my favorite, as well as what those four erasers are and what I use them for, make sure to download my free supply list, click the link in the description or scan the QR code, which has links to where you can get the supplies no matter where you live. Step one of fixing this drawing is definitely smoothing out this shading. See what a big difference using blending tools makes with shading. It gets rid of any graininess and actually blending this out was really quick and easy. I think because this paper was just so smooth, it actually made it easier to blend out the shading. Step two is fixing the values. I need to get in those darker tones, especially around the eyes. And sometimes you don't realize how light your shading is until you go in with a super dark pencil like this one and you just see what a difference it makes to the drawing. I also need to darken up a lot of the values in the hair as well and it was actually really hard to add this darker shading over the top of the HB pencil shading because I have already pressed so hard with that HB pencil and the paper is so thin that it's just really hard to get the paper to take that darker shading and to get it to stick. So the result is a little more streaky and blotchy than it would normally be if I was using better paper and hadn't already pressed super hard with the HB pencil. And finally, step three. This drawing was lacking those lighter details and textures and that is where my erasers come in. I love using a stick eraser. It is so handy and I think it's my favorite drawing tool. It's just awesome. I use it to create tiny highlights on the nose and lips and a load of flyaway hairs that just really help to increase the realism of your drawings. And because we are adding in those brighter highlights and getting in those lighter values, it just helps to give the drawing more contrast, which makes it pop even more. And because I'm able to pull up these highlights again, I don't have to worry about preserving them and not getting any shading on them because I know I can get them back up and I can remove that graphite. It's just so easy to create beautiful bright highlights with these small erasers. And look at what a difference just making these three changes has made to this drawing. The difference between these two drawings is massive and it was fairly easy to do because the tools did most of the work. And this drawing was done using really cheap paper. What could the drawing have looked like if I was using proper drawing paper? So I really recommend checking out these supplies yourself. Even adding just one or two of these supplies to your toolkit will make a massive impact on your drawings. And if you want to know the three biggest lessons I have learned from doing over 300 drawings, then check out this video next. Thank you for watching and I will see you there.